welcome. Welcome, everybody. Um, can you hear me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm Stephen Kessler, this is Christopher Hahn, and together we are artistic directors of the Celebrate Piano Series, of which this is our third event. Uh, can you go a couple of months, weeks, or whatever <laughs> ago? Uh, was, yes, just a few weeks ago was uh, two events, and so this is Celebrate Piano Series number three, Philip Auberg. And Philip, many of you know, is from Chester, Montana, grew up there, and eventually settled back there. And this is a great place and a great privilege for us to have him in our state. One of my favorite stories about Phil, and I've known him since we were both in our 20s, and Phil when he was in high school, used to take the train from Chester to Spokane, Washington, every two weeks for lessons with this renowned teacher, no longer with us, but always with us in spirit, Margaret Saunders Ott, one of the great teachers in our nation, really. And so here was Phil getting on this train, probably doing some homework, we don't know, and uh, <laughs> getting to Spokane and taking lessons for four hours and then going to a symphony concert and then getting on another train back to Shelby to catch a ride home with his mom, all kind of stuff like that. This guy was dedicated from birth, practically. And so we're thrilled that you're here. You will have information in your program that matters. If you will, please give yourself a chance to win one of four CDs and a couple of winnings of pairs of tickets for the Tanya Gabrielian concert in January. So we'll actually have six drawings. You have six chances to win. Just fill this out. If you're already getting mailings, you really can just fill in your name. But if you're new to us, please take the time to give us some information. We do need your name someplace on this so that if you're a winner, <laughs> otherwise it's like, I'll be the winner. Okay, so Chris is, gonna, Chris is gonna tell you a little bit about our master class tomorrow. I think you just did. Uh, so Phil will be doing a master class tomorrow at three o'clock in the music recital hall. It's a great opportunity um, to uh, interact with our uh, artists a little bit more up close and personal. We have uh, four of our uh, piano students from the university uh, performing for Phil. Of course, he performed in here yesterday for 700 school children uh, that we arranged and had bust in. Fabulous show, Phil was great as we know he will be for you as well. Uh, I don't think he'll have the same program because you're not all fifth graders, but nonetheless, uh, be enthusiastic as, uh, as if you were. Uh, without further ado, the wonderful, the Montanan, Phil Alberg. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't see you. <laughs> had the, when I had the 700 fifth graders here, we had all the lights on because you know what happens with 700 fifth graders when you turn the lights on. <laughs> so just behave yourselves, okay? <laughs> well, thanks for coming. This is such a great program that the piano department and the University of Montana is putting on. I first came to uh, study with people from the U of M when I was 14. There was a, there used to be a piano camp here. There probably still is. And uh, it was a big thrill for me. Let's see, Hummel and Went were the two names back then. Uh, Chris and Steve now. <laughs> so thank you for coming to this. Uh, that was High Plains. That's, I always have to play my biggest hit, you know, or my only hit. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so I'd like to play something now from uh, another record called Blue West which was recorded up in Chester. I wanted to do uh, sort of variations on the blues because, of course, uh, everybody knows that uh, Chester is the birthplace of the blues. So, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, anyway, it is. So, uh, this is a piece called Little Brother. And I say, oh, yeah, I'll do this. Um, there is a very famous um, 20th century composition quoted in this piece. And see, since I can't see you, you're going to have to be on your honor. So, uh, you know, if you show up uh, after the concert and tell me the name of the first one to tell me the name of it, or you can yell it out, and then all your neighbors can say, yeah, he did it. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a free CD, my latest uh, CD from the ground up. All right, and this piece called Little Brother, and I'm sure we all, all of us with little brothers will understand what this piece is about.
Thank you. Where? Right there. Great balls of fire. That is a 20th century piece, isn't it? Yes. Stravinsky Petrushka. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. How many of you got that? Yeah. Okay. It's good. Well, you should know that. You should know that. You should all know that. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> All right, so I guess I got to give a lot of CDs away, I guess, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm in Missoula. I should have known. <laughs> the only other people who got that before were a music teacher and a Lutheran minister. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Uh, here's another. I, I write a lot of pieces about uh, Montana and, uh, because that's where I'm from. And I know that people who usually come for this piano series um, have Russian names. Isn't that right? <laughs> so I'm sorry I don't have a Russian name, but Aberginsky, Aberginsky. But yeah, uh, no, it's Norwegian, very Norwegian. So uh, this is a piece uh, I love to fish, and don't tell anybody, but a lot of times when I'm standing in the river waving a stick, I'm really listening. And I don't really care whether I catch a fish. Sometimes I do care whether I catch a fish, but there's so much going on out there, and there's so many different currents, and there's so many uh, things to think about in this body of water that starts as snow melt in the Rocky Mountain front, trickles down, forms Two Medicine Creek, Cutback Creek, creek if you're from somewhere else. <laughs> and together they join and form the Marias River, which does what uh, most rivers do. It has long runs and stretches of riffles and backwaters and little falls and trickles down and eventually gets to be a mighty river that goes into the Missouri and then down into the ocean. So this is Marias River Breakdown.
Thank you. Uh, I was just uh, lucky enough to be commissioned by the um, Montana Farmers Union uh, to write a piece for their 100th anniversary celebration, which is a really big deal. And uh, also, I think, I don't know whether it's the first time a group like that has, you know, an, an agrarian group has commissioned a composer to write a piece for them. Um, but I was really honored, really thrilled. My grandfather uh, moved to Montana in 1914 and uh, had a little bit of land, so we had a little bit of farmland. Uh, my piano resides in a grain bin, and uh, maybe that's why they asked me. It could, could very well be. That's why they asked me to write this piece. Um, so I started researching, of course, uh, the history of the Farmers Union, which is a really wonderful history. started in Texas in 1906. And I thought, well, you know, 1906 was when everybody had a piano or a pump organ or something in their house. And they probably all sat around playing music and singing music together. And sure enough, uh, although it took me a while, I found a Farmers Union hymnal from 1906, and even though it's called a hymnal, the instructions said, for picnics and meetings and get-togethers. So originally I was going to uh, you know, write variations on some of these pieces, but, but I took uh, my cue from the sounds of, of farm machinery. So on the CD that I made, there's sounds of um, horse-drawn plows, and there's sounds of steam tractors, there's sounds of old gasoline engines, and newer diesel engines, and metal larks, and wind. I don't know where the wind came from, but there was some wind in there, too. Uh, boy, we had some wind last night, huh? So, um, the piece that I chose uh, to set off to start the, um, the whole program with is called Help. And it's from that hymnal. Um, then I'm just going to play these, these four pieces in a row. The first one is Help. Uh, the second one is called Homestead. And that is taken from the rhythm of big draft horses pulling a plow with the, the trappings. And they're just a wonderful, you know, if you've ever been around draft horses, you know what a peaceful effect they have on you. And then the next piece is completely the opposite. It's called Rockfield Boogie. And uh, up in the Highline, where I come from, the, the uh, glaciers dumped a lot of stone <laughs> on, the, on the fields. And uh, one of the uh, jobs that kids have, including my own son, Jake, is uh, it's called picking <laughs> rock. Picking rock. Sounds romantic, kind of, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. So this one's called Rockfield Boogie, and it ends with uh, a harvest waltz. Um, but uh, this was interesting. You know, the, the words to help are, are really interesting. They were from, uh, they were written by someone else. The composer was A.C. Neese from Texas, and the words by, were by G.W. Hanley, who was a uh, farmer's union, uh, I think he was an officer. Um, so I just wanted to read a little bit, like one or two of these verses. They're, they're really uh, interesting for that time, the history of that time. In righteous and indignant storm, most workers now demand reform. We cannot live, pay tax, and rent while masters take such great percent. Ten million more to mold events and help expand intelligence. I love that. <laughs> More help will be our bugle's call till union binds the farmers all. More help to push along this plan to bring just rights to laboring man. More men we need to teach. The wise farmers will now all organize. Ten million more to mold events and help expand intelligence. More help will be our bugle's call till union binds the farmers all.
Paxton Marler, Paxton Marler from the University of Montana. Kristen Cottom from the University of Montana. Thank you guys, beautiful. Thank you. It's really wonderful to see uh, what's going on in the music school and see what wonderful students are coming in and are willing to do things like this, which is really a thrill for me. Uh, Paxton is a freshman, and I think Kristen is a junior majoring in music. And they were both in the marching band, too. I was in my hotel across the river. Could hear them marching away this afternoon in that freezing weather. This was dedication. I'll play one more tune for you, and then we'll have a, a short intermission. And um, there, is a, there are refreshments out there, I think, from Liquid Planet, I think, has a stand out there. You're probably used to that. And then uh, we'll be selling CDs and some sheet music. And I'll be happy to sign those after the show. Uh, it increases their resale value at the St. Vincent de Paul Society. <laughs> I'll play one tune before intermission. This is called Up Right.
Okay. <laughs> just, just to keep it all honest, we're having a neutral party <laughs> to do the drawing. And then we're going to read whatever name we want. <laughs> All right, CD? This is, uh, okay, we'll make this a CD, and um, whoever gets to the table can pick. There's four CDs there, and there's one of each of the four CDs that he's playing from, pieces from these CDs tonight. So whoever gets to the table first, this doesn't mean that you'll be the winner of any particular one, but if you're the first one to the table, you get to choose first. That's too complicated. I know. It's, well, I'm not making this name up. It's Deborah Sears. She just filled this out. <laughs> All right. Let's see who, what other friends we can help out here. Uh, Nancy Cochran. Another CD. Okay. okay. Nancy Cochran, you here? Yay. Yay. Okay. Bring it up there. Do you have a name on there? Uh-oh. Yeah, Joyce Walters. Didn't you win last time? <laughs> <laughs> Joyce Walters, are you here? Yeah, All right. Great. Okay, Congratulations, Joyce. CD. Here we go. You <laughs> must be present to win. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Another CD. This is a half a CD. <laughs> uh, Lois Nyenhaus. Yeah? yeah? You here? Aren't there any men here? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. That's great. It's a good, good sign for you. So now we have two more prizes. A uh, pair of tickets, right? A pair of tickets to Tanya Gabrielli on January 24th, 3 p.m. at the recital hall next door. Uh, Julia McKenzie. Here? I, I know, right? I know. <laughs> who, who played that? What piece was in that first one, that quote from the Russian guy? <laughs> that You have to answer that to win. Okay. <laughs> Julia McKenzie. Okay. And here's another set of two tickets. <laughs> Isn't Phil doing a great job? <laughs> They used to call them drawing room pianists, okay? <laughs> <laughs> drawing it out of the crowd. Okay, here we go. This is the last pair of two tickets to Pittsburgh. I mean, two tickets to, <laughs> to, Ju to Tanya Gabrielian. This is Elaine, is it Catton? Caton? Okay, did we get the name right close? How do you say it? See, it's honest, okay. <laughs> she knows. All right, thank you all. Yeah, the, the thing they forgot to t say about those drawings is now everybody who won has to come up and play a piece. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I used, to in, I used to introduce this piece by saying, picture, if you will, a train full of Rastafarians ro rolling across the high plains. But people would, <laughs> people didn't. Then I got a review in some Utah paper that said, uh, Auberg is a pretty good piano player, but he really talks a lot of nonsense from the stage. So this is a piece um, in Chester, Montana, where I live, in the, in the house of my uh, grandfather, brought into town. It was a, a homestead shack. He paid a hundred bucks for it and hauled it in. To Chester, um, you're not very far from the trains. And there are, this, these days, with all the oil and stuff, there's probably 50 to 60 trains a day that go through town. So consequently, I write a lot of train pieces. And this one is called Westbound.
Thank you. That's uh, Takata number one. You know, a lot of these pieces that, that I write um, are really uh, influenced by, you know, roots music, by um, the vernacular, uh, American vernacular. And a lot of the forms come from classical music or uh, what uh, Joe Zhao and all the weather report used to call a uh, crystalline form, where one thing leads to another. So um, people never know where to put me in the record bins, which is OK. It's OK by me. I have my own bin. <laughs> it's where I keep my piano. Yeah. So uh, one of the um, reporters who came here with uh, to take pictures of the kids and, and talk about the, uh, this program that the uh, piano department does that is such a great thing. You know, ambassadors of the piano, these guys do such great work and have for a long time, a long time into the future. Um, but she asked me if I was going to do a Missoula song. And I, I said, yeah, I could, you know, I usually improvise something. I could improvise a Missoula piece, but I just realized I actually have is is Lolo Pass close enough? Does that count? <laughs> okay. I got a Lolo Pass tune. Um, I was touring with a band called New Grange and pretty good musicians, um, Tim O'Brien, Todd Phillips, Allison Brown, Mike Marshall, and Daryl Anger. And uh, we had a band together, and, and we were touring around. Uh, Daryl and I were actually touring around, and we realized that we had to get back and do this New Grange record. And we owned, <laughs> every band member was going to write two pieces or bring in two pieces. And Daryl and I had been, you know, going between Glasgow and Lewistown and then back to Chinook and then down to Billings. It's all driving all over the place. And uh, we realized towards the end of the tour we hadn't written our pieces, so we had a day off and we stopped on Lolo Pass. And we each rented a cabin and we hauled, Daryl hauled his fiddle in there and I hauled a keyboard in there. And at the end of the, we just didn't eat, didn't sleep, didn't talk to each other. At the end of the day we came out and said, you got your pieces? We said, yep, got them. So this is one of them, and it's called Cabin Waltz. Oh, I should, one more thing. I should say, um, we played this with New Grange a lot, and people kept asking me at uh, solo concerts if I would uh, do this piece. So finally, I did an arrangement of it, and that arrangement is on High Plains Christmas.
Thank you. Um, talk to a lot of young composers and uh, in high school kids who are starting off and they're always saying, well, how do you, I get these great ideas and how do you put them down? How do you keep track of them? And I say, any way you can, write it on your hand, write it on a piece of paper, record it onto your phone, do it onto a computer, whatever it is, if you have a good idea, put it there. And uh, this next piece, I, I wrote the first part of it when I was 21, and I wrote the rest of it when I was 46. <laughs> and I kept that little chunk, just kept saying, hmm, I like that. I have no idea where that goes. And then one day I was writing something, and uh, Elliot Carter, a great 20th century composer, passed away just a while ago, um, used to compose <laughs> some of his pieces that way. He would write different ideas and different developments on scraps of paper or pieces of manuscript paper, and he'd put them on the wall, and then he'd walk around and look at them. We kind of have the same thing today with uh, contemporary um, scoring programs like Finale and Sibelius, you can do the same thing. But uh, this one was a scrap of paper I'm glad I held on to. It's called Before Barbed Wire.
Thank you. Well, the world is hurting now, and I think the last time I said something political from the stage was in College Station, Texas. Do you know anything about College Station, Texas? It was uh, during the first, uh, first series of bombings. Anyway, the street that goes around College Station, Texas is called uh, George W. Bush Avenue. And when I did this piece, it was called Every Deep Dream, I said, um, I said, in God's eyes, an Iraqi soldier, an American soldier, and an Iraqi life and an American life are the same. And before I did the piece, got a standing ovation. People were so great. The place was packed. After I said that, I couldn't get a ride home. <laughs> True. Nobody bought any CDs. They didn't. So, I really, I, uh, there's nothing I want to say about what's going on in the world now uh, other than to say that one, one of the things that um, lifted my spirits incredibly were the 700 fifth graders who were here the other day. I think, I really, I said this, I think the, the fifth graders have to be the most advanced human beings on the planet. <laughs> and I think we should all, I think we should all hang out with fifth graders at some point in our lives, you know, and try to remember that. Uh, and I was looking in Wikipedia, I actually looked up peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E. I looked up peace, and I, I'm pretty sure that the first definition was close to this. Peace is a period of time between wars. So we probably have this with us always, and, and we can only do what we can do. But my wish, and this the name of this piece is called Every Deep Dream, my wish is that we have peace, and we have peace for these fifth graders, for our grandchildren, for our children, and for their grandchildren. It's called Every Deep Dream.
I'd like to play uh, one more tune. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks uh, for being here instead of uh, at the Scowling Muskrat Con. What is it? Uh, Archie Puppy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Chuckling Marmoset, whatever the name is. <laughs> Some funny animal kind of name. Uh, but I'm sure people are having a great time there. And I had a great time with you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting the piano uh, series. And thanks to Chris and Steve for bringing me in and for doing such great ambassador work for the piano. I told the kids um, the other day that I walked over to the piano and I said, the universe is inside here. And, and if you study piano, you know what I'm talking about. You, the piano can take you anywhere. So those of you who have kids taking piano, those of you who are, who come up to me in the line and say, gee, I wish I had kept taking piano lessons. <laughs> so, go ahead, just get yourself a piano. <coughs> a lot of great teachers around here. Thank you all for coming. I'd like to play one more tune. This is, uh, this is a tune from Blue West, and it's, um, you've heard of uh, that gospel song, This Train, This Train Don't Carry No Gamblers. No crapshooters, no midnight ramblers. It sounds pretty exclusive to me, so uh, I think I, I thought I'd better write another song um, since we're all on that train, and it's called That Train.
<laughs> Thank you for. Uh, I, I don't want to. Were you standing up to put your coats on and go out, or were you, somebody over there was? So, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, let me see. What will I do? Well, here's a piece. This is called Shenandoah. Uh, it's gonna. It's it's been on. Uh, I think a Wyndham Hill record uh, in one arrangement. It's coming out on my next record in another arrangement. And um, you know the. Words to this are, the, the origins are, um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say what it's about. I, I've read that it's a Métis song, you know, the mixed uh, Cree, French, the, the voyageurs, basically. I've heard it was a Métis song. Um, and there's so many words that you can look up uh, on the internet, and I don't really know which ones of them are the authentic ones. or, uh, But I do know... Uh, Two things, it's about rivers and it's about longing. <laughs>